Alright guys, so one of the things I've been working on lately has been connecting an Arduino up to uh, Link2FS for Microsoft Flight Simulator X. So let's take a quick look at how to get started with this. What we're going to actually do today is set up our gear lights. So if we look down here on my ga dash, that is the uh, lever for controlling the landing gear. If I push a button on my joystick, the lever goes down, and as you see in the bottom right corner of your screen there, the Arduino tells me what the position of my gear is. My gear is safely down, so the LEDs are green. While they're in transit, the LEDs are red. While they're fully up and locked, the LEDs are off. So let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to have to do, assuming you already have Microsoft Flight Sim, is go to jimspage.co.nz. From here we're going to click here to go to his Flight Simulator pages. And from this screen we're going to download Link2FS Multi for FSX. So we're going to click on that, we're going to come to this page here. It's going to be install instructions, some usage instructions. We're going to go all the way down here to this nice big blue link with the zip folder. And we're going to download that. Now while that downloads, we're going to create a new folder. Just call it L2FS. Now that our zip folder is downloaded, we're going to click on that, take everything in here, and extract it to our new folder. That's pretty much it for setting up links, link to FS. We're going to want to run this after we start Microsoft Flight Sim to actually get any usability out of it, but let's take a quick look at it. Our start screen here sh may look a little daunting, maybe a bit confusing, but it's actually pretty easy to navigate. What we see here is SerialCom.S card 1. So what we're going to do here is select the COM port that our Arduino runs on, maybe click connect just to make sure it connects. It turns green so it's working. If it turns another color and gives you this, it's not working. In that case, just click on the correct COM port and it should start working. So I'm going to tell this to connect Arduino card 1 on startup and save all settings. Now if we go back into our L2FS folder, we'll notice there's some cards. These are basically your settings for each individual card. So the next thing we're going to, ta going to take a look at is in this menu here we're going to look at Sim Connect Extractions 1 under this menu, you'll see a whole bunch of checkboxes under three different columns. We're interested in indications and the top three. Gear nose, we want to check that. Gear left, we want to check that. And gear right, we want to check that. Now we want detail, so we're going to check these three. Detail just gives you more detailed information instead of up or down. It'll give you the actual position. So that's pretty much all we're going to have to do on this end. Alright, so let's take a look at the code here for the Arduino. First thing we're going to do is set some uh, variables here. We're going to set 
a simple integer and call it code in. This is going to be to store incoming characters from link to fs. Uh, a string for gear n, gear l, and gear r. This is three separate strings. We could just do string gear n, string gear l, string gear r. But it's simpler to just separate them by uh, with a comma since we don't have to set them a value right away. And then three integers, gear n i, gear l i, and gear r i. These are for the gear string. Uh, we're going to use a command called to int in order to convert what's stored in these into integers to store in here. That's why we need these. And then we're going to take the total of these three and just add them together for gear total. I'll explain that better later in the code. So moving on to our setup. We're going to begin serial at 11.50.200. We're going to, going to set a few pin modes. These are the pins for our gear. Pin 2 is going to be the nose, the green nose LED. Pin 3 is going to be the red LED for the nose. Pin 5 is going to be the red LED for the left gear. Pin 6 is going to be the green LED for the left gear. And pin 7 is going to be the red LED for the right gear. And pin 8 will be the red LED for the right gear. And we're just going to set all those to low just as a default and moving on to our loop. So if data is being sent to us from link to fs we're going to get that character which is this function here. Uh, I'm not really going to go into detail on this function that it just grabs a character from the serial buffer and returns it. But, uh, so if, if we're being passed a uh, character, we're going to store it in code in. And then if code in, that first character, is a less than symbol, then we're going to move on to the less than function. Now, the less than function is going to be the entire part of the code that actually controls the gear or the display for the gear. So this just says this is the function. The first thing we're going to do is get the second identifier. The second character in the um, basically the second character that's been passed to us. This is going to pass sorry this is going to pass less than A and a number and then less than B and a number and less than C and a number all right together as I'll show you in a little bit if I can actually get a screen capture. So this just grabs the second letter or character, which will be the A, B, or C. Oops. So we're going to start a switch. 
and we're going to read code in, which is going to now contain that second character. So if that character is A, then this is the number for the nose gear. So the first thing we're going to do is blank gear end so that it doesn't contain any previous data. Then we're going to add a character. So we're going to take gear n and we're going to make it equal plus a character. So that's the first digit. And we're going to do that again to add the second digit. And then we're going to do it again to add the third digit on. Then we're going to take those three digits and convert it to an integer, which will be 0 to 100, as we'll see when I show you the data streaming out of this. So now we're going to take gear ni, which is the integer for the nose, and if it's over a hundred, we're going to turn the nose green LED on, meaning the nose gear is down unlocked and the transit LED, the red LED, off because if it's down and locked it does not need to be on anymore. In any other case we're going to turn the green LED off and the red LED on. Now that leaves room for errors with the red in transit LED which is taken care of in the other function we mentioned. So now basically once it finishes that it's going to pull in the next character which is going to be a B and the next character is going to be a C and it's going to perform that same operation on those two. So these essentially look the same just the pins are different because we're switching different pins and the variables are different because it's the variables for the different gears. I'm going to include this code on GitHub so take your time going through it and try and actually get a nice understanding of it. It can be a bit confusing. So it's going to repeat that process for all three gear. Now we're going to take a quick look at this other. This is just cleaning up that in-transit LED. I had some errors trying to get it to clean it up in the actual gear code. So I put it in other so that it does this every cycle. It's going to check if gear total is 300 because if this is 100 the gear is fully down if this is 100, the gear is fully down, and if the other one's 100, the gear is fully down. So, if the total of all three of those is 300, then all the gear are fully down, and we can turn off or make sure all three LEDs, red LEDs, are off. Also, when we're flying around and our gear is properly up, and put away. We don't want these big bright red LEDs flashing at us. So once all three are fully put away we do the same thing. Turn off all three red LEDs so that all the LEDs are off. And that is essentially the code. I almost forgot. I'll try and show you guys the data streaming out of here. It's all frozen on me. If I move the mouse, nothing happens. 
but I can always alt tab. I've got this in a monitor already. So this is what's coming through. This is what the Arduino sees. Every few seconds, it updates the gear position, or when it changes, it instantly updates the gear position. So if I'm flying around, which I have a hard time doing because it's frozen. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, so if I'm flying around, focus. And I hit my gear lever. It'll update that instantly. It pauses every time I leave the screen though. And as you can see, it goes through the whole range there. Alright, so let's take a look at the schematic. This is probably actually the easiest thing to do, is hook everything up in this particular project. All we're going to need is the Arduino, a power source, which will be the USB because it's going to be hooked up through serial, and three RGB LEDs. So how to actually hook it up? Well, the pinout might be different for you, unless you've used the code that I've included. We're going to assume you're using the code I'm going to supply. So from my code, we know that pin 2 and 3 are for the nose. Sorry, pin 2 and 3 are for the nose. Pins 5 and 6 are for the left gear. And 7 and 8 are for the right gear. So we know pin 2 is going to be our nose green. So we're going to take our green, bring it around to pin 2. Likewise, we're going to take red, bring it around to pin 3. Now we're going to move to our right gear, or let's call this our left gear. So for our left gear, we know pin 5 and 6. Pin 5 is going to be our red. And pin 6 is going to be our green. Oops. So, moving on to our right, we know pin 7 is our red, pin 8 is our green. <coughs> so. Okay, so back on the computer, we're going to plug in our Arduino. We're going to select our board. Just using an Uno for this one, COM5, and upload. I said upload. So that's uploaded. 
So now we can exit the IDE, open up that folder we created, link2fs, l2fs, and let's just open up link2fs quickly. See our board connected without telling it to, that's perfect. Turned green, meaning the connection's good. Let's just double check here, we've got our gear checked off, in detail checked off. So let's exit this whole program. Let's link to FS, exit that. Let's open up Microsoft Flight Sim. <coughs> I'm sorry to be doing this on my uh, camera, filming my TV, guys. As I'll show you once we get into it, this computer can't quite handle everything at once. Alright, we start up Flight Sim. I am going to mute that. I'm going to load a file where I'm already in the air, just for the sake of doing this quickly. So now as it's loading, we can open up link to fs minimize the folder, let that open up let it do its thing it's connected, so just click back to flight sim and it should be running right here, three green gear so if I push my Gear button down here. Oh, there's my crash. But if I push the gear button, now they change color in transit, and all three are up. Bring all three down. back up, in transit, and up and away. So, it's hard to, <laughs> hard to see that on camera, but I can just tell it screwed up by the glitch in the corner. And I'm gonna have no mouse control. Yeah. So that's why we're not doing this on screen capture. Sorry guys. Alright guys, so that's been our first look at Microsoft Flight Sim 10 and Link to FS. Talking to an Arduino. So Today we got the gear, uh, gear lights working, and let me just show you something here. Eventually, we'll be able to do something like this. Completely wireless. Bluetooth. We've got our gear lights, which my gear down for some reason. We can change that. We got gear lights. We got the flaps position. We got rudder trim for now. That's gonna be elevator trim eventually. And we got four buttons here. That one's for the flaps. Oh god, I'm crashing here. <laughs> so these two are for the flaps, and these two are for my gear. So anyway, 
Next time we'll take a look at inputs. So buttons, switches, things of that nature. And maybe we'll throw in a... Uh, uh, no, we'll leave that for another video. So next time we'll take a look at inputs. Anyway, like, subscribe, dislike if you want, uh, leave a comment, ask a question. Any other YouTube stuff you can think of. Have a good one, guys.